Right. Today's plan is to ride about 250 kilometers and, and up in the valley of Susa. But first we need to get out of the camp. So this plan is to cross a bit back and forth between Italy and uh, France. I will cross into France now to begin with and then back into Italy later. So that is the plan. Right, I have paid. So now we just need to load up the navigation. 251 kilometers. Start. Right then, let's go. So, uh, bike is charged charge up. I uh, got electricity at the camp. So, uh, we should have, we probably have enough range to make the trip today, but there are several options along the way. Uh, anyway, so, I may stop and top up a bit, just to have a buffer. We are heading for the Agnell Pass, or Passo di Agnello, I think was the Italian name. And this will take us back into France. Here we go! To the mountains! Crossing into France. Oh, lots of people. So, first pass of the day done, off to the next one, which I don't remember which one, but um, time will tell. This is awesome riding, and the views are just amazing everywhere. Crank the region to full. And it's uh, being used. All of it. Even have to apply the brakes. Seems to be one of the more popular passes this. At least there's uh, quite a bit of traffic 
and there are lots of people on the top there. A bit uh, quieter, the one I did, uh, at least the first I did uh, yesterday. So we are on the way to Col de l'Isoir. So that will be the next pass we're going over. And this is also, I guess, a popular one. I think so, at least. Now I'm back on the, the Grand Alp route. I feel, if I remember correctly. So uh, there's probably a lot of people just doing this route. I also used that to plan my uh, trip, but I'm deviating a little bit from the uh, actual route. But the Grand Alp uh, route goes mainly uh, through the French uh, Alps, but I'm also going to swing by Italy a bit more. Right, that was uh, Col d'Isoir. Yeah, I didn't spend much time on top, I just um, yeah, I took a photo a bit from the side because uh, so many people were waiting to take the photo right in front of the, um, of the sign. So I just uh, took from the side. Now we're heading down again. And uh, maybe this, uh, oh, maybe this is a, uh, small restaurant. I can stop there and have a little uh, snack or something. We're going up again. Col de Galipier. I think. Very nice. And these views are just almost forget to look at the road. We are closing in on our destination for today. 40 kilometers left. Uh, just one uh, final uh, mountain pass to cross to get us back into um, Italy. So we are heading up uh, Mont Valseni. Was it? Yeah, I think it was. Col de Mont Cenis. Yes, Col de Mont Cenis. So that's the final pass for today.
I never uh, stopped at any uh, charges. I didn't really pay attention to where they were placed. So um, yeah, but we have, uh, we should have uh, plenty of uh, range. Unless I'm, I'm getting a surprise on this uh, pass. But uh, yeah, I'm at 33% and we have 38 kilometers to go. So that should be uh, plenty. 216 kilometers so far today. Let's just get past this. So, uh, yeah, another amazing day. It's just, yeah, it's so great to be here. Right, we just uh, passed back into Italy and I have uh, about 15 kilometers to go. And we are at 26% battery, so no worries. Well, actually, it's a bit further to the charging station, I think, if I can't charge at the camp, but it's still uh, plenty within reach. This is a good example of why I don't like the way uh, Energica calculates um, estimated range. Because at the top of the pass there, I think it was around uh, 50 kilometers ex estimated range. And now that I'm going down, it's, um, yeah, it's 260 now and it's probably gonna keep uh, going up. And uh, none of these numbers are correct. But it would... Uh, I'm pretty sure that if you, they used to set uh, uh, watt hour per kilometer and just maybe just allow us to adjust it if based on the riding style or whatever, that would give a much more realistic range and it wouldn't go up and down like crazy like it does uh, now. So I know it's saying 350 kilometers, it's like not a chance in hell, you know, unless it goes down forever. But anyway, I'm used to uh, I'm used to it, so I'm just looking at the percentage anyway. I know pretty pretty well how far the bike uh, will go under these uh, circumstances. So I think I'll end this video here. I'm just uh, yeah, just a few kilometers out of uh, Susa, and. Um, yeah, I'll be looking for a camp now and uh, hopefully find a place to stay. So thank you for watching and uh, see you next time. Yeah, another great day. And uh, yeah, several passes this day. So I started down here in um, San Pere and then crossed into France again over the Agnel Pass. Then I continued in... Um, in France over several passes before I finally turned back into Italy and down in the Susa Valley. I stay in Susa for two nights because in the next episode I'm doing a short loop in this area and it's going to be awesome. So see you next time.